In this lesson, I'm going to explain what reverse fill is and how to use it. So I, I'll do that by drawing out an arrow. Let's say I've got a client who wants a red arrow with the word now open written on it. So I'll come here and I'll type in now open as such. Okay. Now I'll make that bold and because the background of the sign is white, we're going to cut this out of this arrow. We'll see the white coming through like that. There's a problem with this. If I select over this and I send it to my cut file, you'll see that it comes in as two pieces. I've got now open as white and I've got the arrow as red. Well that's no good. What I need to do is I need to make this text red so that it cuts out of the arrow. So when I select that and send it to the cut file, I set as one piece. There's a problem with that as well. When I print this out as a proof, I don't see this or if I send it as artwork. So that's why we have reverse fill. Now, the idea of reverse fill is if I select that, um, that piece of text, as you can see it's red up here, current fill red, as is the arrow, current fill red. If I click on that piece of text and I come up to this button here, reverse fill, or alternatively over on this fly out here and come down to reverse fill here, and click on that, we now see this text is in this sort of off-white colour. But when I click on it, you see it remains as red, like that. So I can see it as I want to see it, I can still move it around, it's still text, I can still type in there and change it and alter it. But now when I send this to the cut file, it comes in as one piece, as you can see. So that's exactly how I want to do it, that's a much better uh, situation. So if I select over and I make the whole thing blue like that, I can send that to the cut file and it still comes in like that. Which is advantageous because I can see my artwork properly and yet it's all one colour as far as the cut file is concerned. So that's why we have reverse fill and how reverse fill works. And that's the end of this lesson.